So recently I made a video talking about dependency injection and a lot of people left comments saying that this is a dependency injection, you're doing it wrong. I would honestly say that you all don't know what dependency injection is. So let's have a little lesson to talk about dependency injection. So when you're writing out code, your code is basically split up, split up in the modules or you know functions, right? So in our case, we have like a main function here. And this function may be calling something such as like a file writer, okay? Now, when you have an import statement, so like over here, you'll say import file writer from file writer. Okay, when you import from a file, you have created a dependency. So you'll draw a line here. This is how you denote that this thing depends on this thing. Now, for the most part, I personally don't think there's an issue with this, right? But there's a lot of um, academia that says you shouldn't have certain modules depending on other modules because it makes stuff harder to test. And I think this is true for like statically typed languages like Java or C Sharp or Go, where when you import something, that is basically resolved compile time. And so this module is going to have to go and compile this module, which might depend on some other stuff. And this has to keep on traversing the dependency tree and compiling all of these modules together, right? And JavaScript doesn't really have this issue because when you import something, this is all resolved runtime right for the most part like this is imported on runtime and if you need to write a byte test or a jest test you can actually do like a jest.mock and you can mock out the file writer in your test without having to like do extra stuff in your code to make it more testable the one topic that you should learn about is dependency inversion so instead of this thing this module depending on this module what you can do is you can have this thing depend on an interface okay let's just pretend like this is an interface and the file writer is going to depend on the interface so now this module doesn't actually care about the implementation of file writer all it cares about is some type of interface which happens to have maybe like a write function on it so this is a form of uh, dependency inversion where now you can compile this thing and the only thing it needs to compile is this in the interface and it doesn't worry about the file writer which may do other stuff behind the scenes okay this is also very useful because let's say down the road you decide you know you want to use an S3 writer instead. Well, you can easily do that. You just have to make a new S3 writer implementation, have that extend or implement the interface, and now you can easily just swap these things out and have this thing use whatever implementation detail that you want. Now, the reason this also makes testing easier is in your unit test, you don't have to pass it file writer. You don't have to pass it S3 writer. You can just pass it whatever stub that you want as long as it has a write method. And that write method could do absolutely nothing, right? It just needs to take in something that matches this interface. So how do we go about inverting the dependency? Okay, so what we could do is we could have the main function actually take in a context. Now what I call this is just functional injection. This is a form of dependency inversion, dependency injection if you wanna say, where instead this thing takes in a context object and this has a writer on it, like this. And it's going to have a write method on it that takes in some contents and it does something. So now instead of calling a write that's imported up here, you can actually just say context.writer.write pass in hello world. Okay. And so what this is doing is now we actually said that this main function depends on an interface or a type. Okay, so you could technically make this a type. I could say export type writer is equal to this. And then this thing could take in a writer as a type. Congratulations, you just inverted that dependency and you have achieved functional dependency injection. I don't, I don't know what you'd call this, but I call it just functional dependency injection. And now to get this to work, we have to go up a level to the thing that's calling this. So let's go to main. And now this thing needs to take in whatever the dependency was. And so now we, the control is kind of in the caller function to figure out like, okay, what type of writer do you want to use? So in the main function, let's just go ahead and import that file writer like we did before. And we need to make this pass in some context. So writer will take in a write function like this. Okay. Now we could clean this up a little bit more, but you have successfully inverted that dependency. So let's just go ahead and run this. And it says we are writing to a file. And so instead of writing the code like this, what we could potentially do is I could say export const writer. And that is going to be a type of writer, which will come from the main. And then we're going to give that a write function. Okay, that takes in some contents and it's going to go ahead and just do the console log. Uh, actually, I'm going to call this file writer. 
So now we have a file writer object, and you could use a class if you're really big into object-oriented programming, if you're that type of developer. But now what we can do is you go back to main, we're gonna import the file writer, and then we're gonna pass in the file writer here. Again, it matches the interface, TypeScript is happy, and we could rerun this and have this work. You can also do this with interfaces if you want. I like using types, but you can use an interface. Uh, it's up to you. So now what we can do is if you go to the S3 writer, again, we just need to have the S3 writer basically extend that same interface or uh, you know definition. So let's just go ahead and try to follow this pattern again. And we're gonna call this S3 writer. And we'll say we are writing to S3, just like this. So they both have the exact same signature, but now what I can do is when the program is about to run, you can actually just swap this out with an S3 writer. And when I run this code, it'll say we are writing S3, okay? So that's one of the benefits. You can easily swap stuff out. And then like, let's say you wanted to have this change based on like a environment variable. So if, if the writer is equal to S3, then we'll use the S3 writer. Otherwise we'll use the file writer. This allows you to basically run the command. I can say, I wanna use the writer, which is, uh, we'll just say like file. Okay, and that should say we are writing to a file. Okay, so now we are able to swap out the functionality uh, based on environment variables or configuration file, which can be beneficial in some cases. You can also swap out functionality based on a request body parameter. So like, let's say this is a REST API and based on a header or based on some body payload, you can swap out how stuff is gonna be written. A lot of people say that what I just showed is not dependency injection. Uh, I don't know why, maybe they need to go back and learn a little bit about it. But you're basically inverting your dependencies and you're injecting your dependency instead as an argument instead of having it be directly imported from the module, which is fine. I know these people are very used to their Java and their Spring and their hibernating XML files and their injectables. So let's, let's talk a little bit about how a lot of people do dependency injection using inversion of control containers. So I pulled in one called Inversify, which you can kind of set up in your walk through this guide. But what this allows you to do is let's just go ahead and delete a lot of this other code that we're not going to need. So I have a project set up over here with Inversify and I want to kind of walk you through some of these files. So here is the main file, this index.ts. And you can see here we import an Inversify config, we import some types, we import a writer interface. And when this program runs, we basically say, hey, I need to use some container and I need to get back the writer that's configured in my system. And behind the scenes, Inversify knows how to swap stuff out based on how you have registered it with your container. So in our case, this writer thing just returns an object that has a write function. But you don't know if it's an S3 writer. You don't know if it's a, a file writer, right? So how this is kind of set up, if you go to the Inversify config, you'll see that we create a container here. And that container is where we bind using the type like the interface, we use the interface and then we pass in what we want the implementation to be. So in our case, we're saying pass in file writer, but if we wanted to, we can go ahead and say, if process env writer is equal to S3, then we'll do the S3 writer like this. Otherwise we'll do that one. So kind of similar to what we did in the other file. And so when I run this project, go ahead and run this in source index like this, and we'll do the file writer. Notice that it says we are writing to a file. Same idea, if we change this to S3, it'll say we are writing to S3. So how I've seen a lot of code bases work is they use these like IOC containers and they have like a place where they set all this stuff up. So like on runtime, it can figure out what these dependencies actually are. And so our case, we're binding the writer to one of these implementation details. And to look at the interface for this, again, it's just a writer that has a write function, nothing new there. And then for the entities, this is where it gets kind of interesting. You can see that we have injectable put on top of these classes here, okay? And both of these classes extend that writer interface, which is gonna make sure that they have that write method. So if I were to delete this, this is gonna turn red because this writer has to implement the write function. And so basically you make all these injectable things and then you can actually use them throughout your code base. And something that they kind of walk you through in these docs is that they can actually inject things using constructor injection. So, all right, so I went ahead and refactored this to use either the file writer or the S3 writer, because what I'm doing here is I'm saying, make a class called my writer thing. It has a private writer member. In the constructor, we are injecting whatever the writer is configured to 
when we set this thing up. Okay, and so that's going to dynamically resolve the correct dependency. It's going to inject that and write that to that property. And then later on, when we call a run method, it's going to use the correct writers. Actually, I think this will work. We have to add injectable here, and then this should probably implement some type of runnable writer. Okay, and then we're going to have to go and make a type here. I don't know. We'll say runnable writer is a symbol for runnable writer. Okay, we have to go to interfaces. We probably need to make an interface here. And we'll say this is a run that takes a uh, does nothing, I guess. I'm guessing we still have to do this. So we'll say my container, we'll say bind runnable writer. And we'll say types runnable writer. And we'll pass in the new my writer thing. Okay, so now what we could do, hopefully, is import that. We're going to go over here. And instead of trying to just construct it, you actually have to get it from uh, your container. We'll say container dot get. Like this, go ahead and import that. This needs to take in a runnable writer. I'm gonna change these to console log so we can actually like see it do something. Uh, and this will be void. All right, so running this, it says that we are writing to S3 and then also we can change this to like file and it's gonna say we are writing to a file, okay? So that is another approach with dependency injection where basically they use an IOC container that tries to help auto wire all this stuff. Now the, the main takeaway of all that stuff I just did is that inside of your entities, you can inject different things. And the Inversify library knows how to basically resolve these and inject them into your constructor as it's creating various objects. So that is how you can do it with Inversify. Again, my opinions on this type of stuff is I don't like it. I think it adds a lot of extra complexity to a code base. Secondly, now all your code is highly coupled to Inversify. So when your IOC container library decides to no longer be maintained, you have all your code that's all getting wired together using some third-party library. And hopefully it remains getting maintained over the years. And then thirdly, I think it just makes code very hard to understand. Like if I wanted to see when I call this function run, what it's calling, if I command click it, it takes me to an interface. Super not useful. Okay, so now I have to go to my container and figure out where it's configured. And it's calling my writer thing here. And it has this run method. Okay, I found it. Now, what write method is this calling? Well, this is gonna take me to an interface as well. So now I'm just like super confused because I'm like, dude, I have no idea what's actually working, what, like what's going on. And I would just personally avoid this unless you find a very, very strong need to like invert your dependencies for particular use cases, then maybe you could do it. But I would always do the first approach where just pass it as a context argument to your function and it's much easier to understand. All right, hope you guys enjoyed this overview. Have a good day and happy coding.